Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of you. Welcome back to the proof that Islam is the truth. And we've been talking about some of the amazing miracles of the Quran, the scientific miracles, those facts that can be found in the Quran that leave us awestruck. How could this information be in a book 1,400 years old? And we were looking at those verses in the Quran concerning the development of the human fetus in the womb. And we also were reading a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. When the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that when 42 nights have passed over the conceptus, Allah sends an angel to it who shapes it, makes its ears and eyes and skin and flesh and bones. And then he says, O oh Lord, is it a male or a female? And your Lord decides what he wishes and an angel records it. So it is at the 42nd day or just after the 40th day that it only then becomes identifiable. And this is a fact. This is a scientific fact. Um, and it's very interesting. It's true also that the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, mentioned that there are some things that the knowledge of it is only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the things the Prophet mentioned is what is the sex of the, the child in the womb. As one of the Muslim scholars pointed out, is that this is only up until the 40th day. Because after the 40th day, according to this authentic hadith of the Prophet wasallam, may God's peace and blessings be upon him. The angels know. The angel who is in the womb, shaping the conceptus, shaping the embryo, asks, is it a male or a female? And so from that time, of course, the angel knows. And if the angel knows, as this scholar pointed out, anyone can know. So this is also a truly amazing statement of scientific accuracy. And this is information that in reality we have only uh, begun to discover recently. We also find that the hadith mentions the correct time for the recognizable growth of the features described. And the sects of the fetus can only definitely be determined after 42 days. Now this piece of information was only known after the invention of powerful microscopes only decades ago. Now I've only mentioned this subject of the developing human being in the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad briefly. There is of course a vast amount of literature available if you would like to study this subject more and it's very easily available on the internet and indeed Dr. Zakir Naik has produced a very nice book uh, called uh, Modern Science in the Light of the Quran and Sunnah. So you can get hold of that from the Islamic Research Foundation insha'Allah if you want to explore that area more. But what I thought I would do is mention a quote from Keith Moore who is the professor and chairman of the Department of Anatomy from the University of Toronto in Canada. And Keith Moore is one of the acknowledged experts in the field of the developing human being in its embryonic form. And his book, The Developing Human, is and has been for many years a standard textbook in universities and colleges all over the world. It's been translated into numerous different languages. And he was shown some of the statements in the Quran and the hadith or sayings of the Prophet Muhammad uh, concerning the development of the human embryo. And having studied them, he came to a conclusion. And this is what he said. Until the 19th century, Nothing was known about the classification of the stages of human development. A system of staging human embryos was developed around the end of the 19th century based upon alphabetical symbols. And during the 20th century, numerals were used to describe 23 stages of embryonic development. This system of numbering the stages is not easy to follow and a better system would be based on the morphological changes. 
In recent years, the study of the Qur'an has revealed another basis for the classification of the stages of developing embryo, which is based on easily understood actions and changes in shape. It utilizes terms that were used and sent by God to Prophet Muhammad, by the angel Gabriel, and recorded in the Qur'an. And he goes on to say, it is clear to me that these statements must have come to Muhammad from God because almost all of this knowledge was not discovered until many centuries later. This proves to me that Muhammad must have been a messenger of God or Allah. Viewers, you need to think about this. Here is one of the experts, perhaps the expert in the field, examining the information that is in the Qur'an and that has been mentioned on the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad. And he is saying that not only is it impossible for this information to have been known by anyone 1,400 years ago, he also suggests that modern embryology should follow the system of development that has been mentioned in the Qur'anic verses. In other words, the Qur'an has described the development of the human embryo so beautifully and so effectively that this should be the basis upon which scientific textbooks founded from now on. This is what Keith Moore is saying. So this is really a truly remarkable statement from a truly remarkable scientist who, by the way, has become a Muslim. How did the Prophet Muhammad develop this information? From where did a man living in the desert 1,400 years ago know? From where did he get the knowledge? This is the question that you have to ask. This is the question that you have to examine. The next thing we want to look at is the water cycle. The water cycle, that is the cycle of water where the sun heats the sea and causes evaporation. And from that evaporation, we have clouds forming and how the winds move those clouds and from that rain falls. Now, the Qur'an accurately describes the water cycle and the origin of underground springs. And we're going to be talking about that after the break. So, whatever you do, don't go away, because we have some more amazing facts for you in the proof that Islam is the truth. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to the proof that Islam is the truth. And we're going through some of the amazing scientific statements in the Qur'an. Things that it was impossible for Prophet Muhammad to have known 1,400 years ago. Now one of the things we want to talk about is the water cycle. Now it may seem very obvious to us today about the water cycle. And for example, the origin of underground springs. But the ancient Greeks, for example, didn't seem to get it right, despite all of their philosophy and their knowledge and their ability. They actually theorized that underground springs were a product of spray that came off the sea and collected in caves. And then the spray that came off the sea and collected in the caves dripped down into the underground reservoirs through a great sea called the Abyss. Um, in fact, it was not until the 18th century that the water cycle was really accurately described. Yet the Qur'an says 1,400 years ago, in the 39th surah, in the 21st ayah, have you not seen that Allah sent water down from the sky and led it through sources into the ground? This is a simple but in fact highly accurate description of the water cycle. Another amazing fact that is mentioned in the Qur'an, we find in the 24th surah of the Qur'an in the 40th verse. And it's talking about the state of those people who disbelieve and reject faith in God. The Qur'an describes the state of the disbeliever, the person who has rejected faith, like a darkness. A darkness that is so dark 
It is like the deep depths of darkness in a vast, deep ocean, overwhelmed with wave upon wave, topped by a cloud. If a man stretches out his hand, he can hardly see it. For any to whom Allah gives no light, there is no light. Now, on the surface, here Allah is giving a simple description. A person who does not believe in God and does not follow the guidance that Allah has sent down is a person who is in darkness. They are lost. Their life is a confusion. In fact, their life is so confusing, they can hardly see what is in front of them. This is how Allah is describing it. Darkness upon darkness, confusion upon confusion. He can hardly see or understand what is happening. If God does not give a person light, there is no light. So it is describing a type of absence of light, of being able to see or know really what is truly going on. And so this is the case that is described. So on the surface, we have a very poetic, we have a very, a very strong and vigorous and, and amazing description of this darkness and this state of being lost. Yet when we examine it in more detail, there is something else going on here as well. There is a clue to some scientific truths. First of all, the Quran describes a vast deep ocean and it describes waves upon waves. Now, of course, most of us are familiar with the waves that are on top of the ocean. But what does it mean waves upon waves? Are there other waves in the ocean? Well, we're going to find out. Also, the Quran talks about a person being deprived of light that they can hardly see. Now, a ray of light is composed of seven colors. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. And light, when it hits water, goes through what is called refraction. That means that, for example, in the upper 10 to 15 meters, the water absorbs the red color. And as you go deeper, each of the colors in the spectrum become absorbed by the water. Until you get to a depth of below about 1,000 meters, there is complete darkness. Now what is amazing is that we also find in modern scientific discoveries that internal waves cover the deep waters of the seas and oceans because the deep waters have a higher density than the waters above them. So waves upon waves. We have the internal waves in the deep, deep ocean and then we have the waves on top of the ocean. And then the clouds and so on and so forth, they add to the darkness and the disparity and the, the breaking up and the refracting of light. Now what is interesting is the deep darkness, remember the Quran says, they stretch out their hand, they can hardly see it. This deep darkness begins below the internal waves in the ocean. In fact, there are certain fish down at those depths which need their own lights in order to be able to see. And amazingly, Allah has created these creatures that can actually generate their own lights. Now this is really amazing because of course, until very recently, no one has been able to penetrate and to reach those deep parts of the ocean. It is only with extremely sophisticated modern machinery and submarines and diving suits that someone has been able to go down to that depth. Yet we have the Quran 1,400 years ago describing the internal waves of the oceans and the darkness that is there at the depths of the oceans. How on earth, how in the heavens, could a man living in the desert 1,400 years ago have known about such detailed information about a science like oceanography? Well, Professor Rao, who is an expert in marine biology at the King Abdul Aziz University in Jeddah, says, 
1,400 years ago, a normal human being could not explain this phenomenon in so much detail. This information must have been coming from a supernatural source. My dear viewers, this even is not the end of the amazing scientific statements in the Qur'an. Because the next thing I want to deal with is cosmology. The statements in the Qur'an concerning the universe. Now, until recently, or we could say up until the 1960s, there was a major controversy between scientists concerning the state of the universe. Now, some scientists believed and had begun to develop the idea that the universe was in a state of flux, that the universe was in fact expanding. And from this theory of the expanding universe also came another theory which is commonly known today as the Big Bang Theory. This is the idea that the universe had a common origin in a singularity a dense, condensed type of matter. The universe was a infinitely small, we could say, part of dense matter. And this infinitely small, dense matter then exploded into what is the universe that we know today. Now this was opposed by the static state theory. The static state theory, and this was very much preferred theory of atheists, that the universe was the way it was eternally in the past and will keep on being that way eternally in the future. Uh, and this was a theory that was really largely based, at least initially, and was believed in by Albert Einstein. And many people therefore followed on from that with this idea of the static state theory. And so this idea of the Big Bang theory, which was you know, really held by Fred Hoyle, he was the person who uh, supported this theory, uh, and Lemaitre, who was opposing it with the idea of the Big Bang Theory. Now, evidence came to light that showed that variations in the light spectrum that were being emitted from galaxies and stars, which is called redshift, showed, in fact, that the universe is expanding. And it's amazing that this scientific fact that has now been confirmed and it is agreed upon by almost unanimously all scientists in the field that we live in an expanding universe and the evidence very, very clearly and strongly suggests that. What does the Qur'an say? 1,400 years ago, before there were telescopes and all the means to discover this information, the Qur'an says in the 51st surah, in the 47th ayah, the heaven, we have built it with power and we are expanding it. Let's just repeat that again. The heaven, we have built it with power and we are expanding it. 1,400 years ago, the Qur'an is mentioning how the universe is expanding. The next most important observational evidence was the discovery of cosmic microwave background radiation in 1964 by a powerful telescope. And this had been predicted in the Big Bang Theory as a relic of the hot ionized plasma of the early universe when it first cooled sufficiently to form neutral hydrogen and allowed space to become transparent to light. And its discovery led to the general acceptance among physicists that the Big Bang is the best model for the origin and evolution of the universe. What does the Qur'an say in the 21st surah, in the 30th ayah? Have not those who disbelieved known that the heavens and the earth were joined together 
as one united piece, then we parted them, and we have made from water every living thing. Will they not then believe? The common origin of the universe, or the singularity that scientists believe today the universe originated from, and which led to the Big Bang. It is considered that the conditions of this singularity were so precise, it is almost inconceivable that it could be in that way, except that it has been made by an all-wise and powerful creator. These are some of the amazing things that the Qur'an is telling us about the origin of our universe. The Qur'an also mentions that Allah turned to the heavens when it was Dukhan. And the word Dukhan in Arabic means smoke. This also accurately describes the hot gaseous mass of the universe before the galaxies and the stars began to be formed. So here we have the Qur'an, 1,400 years ago, talking about the expanding universe, talking about the common origin of the universe, that the heavens and the earth were one, talking about the gaseous state, the smoke-like state of the early universe. This is in a book 1,400 years old, mentioning facts that scientists have only begun to discover today. And we have created from every living thing water. It's a fact that every living thing has its basis in and is fundamentally composed of water. You and me are about 70 to 80% water. We are made of about 70 to 80% water. A fact that has been mentioned in the Quran 1,400 years ago. Will you not believe? Will you now not believe? What will it take to make you realize and to understand that the Quran is the truth? That Muhammad is the messenger of God? This is more evidence, the proof that Islam is the truth. Join us for the next episode when we will be going through some more amazing facts from the Quran. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah and His guidance be with all of you.